Hey guys, so if you're just starting to get on Amazon, this is probably where you make the most mistakes, kind of the first year or two when you're really learning uh, the ropes. And so I made another video, uh, part one, which is the 15 most common mistakes that Amazon sellers make, but actually it was really popular, so I wanted to create another part two video with 15 more mistakes that I commonly see that the newer sellers making, so hopefully prevent you guys from making the same mistakes that we did from the early beginning. So if you guys don't know who I am. My name is Fernando Cruz. Last month I've been living in Mexico. Right now actually we're in the beautiful Oaxaca just kind of hanging out with my girlfriend and so yeah a little bit of who I am. I'm one of the partners in Seller Tradecraft and then last year alone we generated over 10 million dollars on Amazon just through our private label business. All right, so new sellers, definitely pay attention to this because this is going to save you guys a ton of headaches in the future. So mistake number one is not using a keyword tool like Zonwords. So Zonwords actually just came out of the market. It's one of my favorite tools specifically for keywords. So I think there's two really important parts to the business is one is choosing the right product, but then two is making sure that your product is actually well optimized. And Zonwords is a great tool specifically for keeping track of your keywords, figuring out which keywords to use. And it's just one central place where you can keep all of that information for all of your products. So I would definitely suggest using that tool. There's other great ones out there like Seller Tools and Keyword Inspector, but overall I think Zonwords is probably the best value so far that I've seen. Mistake number two is if you're going to be doing private label, a common problem is there's going to be a lot of hijackers. So uh, the mistake is not being enrolled in Amazon's brand registry program. And so for those that don't know what uh, brand registry is, it's actually a program where you register your trademark with Amazon. And then basically you have access to all of those listings. You can kind of control who sells on those listings for that specific trademark. And so if you're selling private label, it's going to be a common problem where people are going to jump on your listing, pretend that their product is yours, and then you're going to lose the buy box. And that's a huge problem because you're losing out sales. So brand registry is the best program to, at least right now, that's free to kick off those hijackers. So definitely make sure to enroll your product or your products into brand registry as soon as you can. And if you haven't yet applied for your trade. Mistake number three is actually not personalizing your product at all. And so I see this all the time where someone's like, oh, I'm just going to test with, let's say, 500 units, but I'm not going to put my logo, I'm not going to personalize it at all. At least, at the very, very least, just put like a sticker with your brand. Because when if there is a hijacker, when this is kind of related to, uh, to mistake number two, is that if you don't have anything personalizing the item, then when Amazon asks you to show like the distinguishing features of the products, if you don't have anything, then it's going to be a lot harder to kick those hijackers off. So make sure to personalize your product, even the slightest way, like I mentioned, with like an insert or like a sticker so that Amazon can distinguish your products from your competitors and kick them off your listing. Okay, so mistake number four is not bundling with some with a complementary product to actually differentiate your listing. So Amazon is definitely more competitive than it was maybe like three years ago. And so one of the cool hacks that we do is that we'll bundle our products with a complementary product. Um, and what it does is one, it differentiates our listing, which is great. Uh, two, we can provide more value to our customers because we're going to save on the the combined FBA fees if we're sending uh, if we're selling two items. So there's a lot of great ways to do this. One of my favorites that I've seen is selling like a battery pack, let's say, with an iPhone cable. And so that's just a very like intuitive bundle. So coming up with that, and that's a great way to kind of differentiate yourself from your competition. Mistake number five that I see is people don't optimize their listings. And so this is like a huge area for improvement. So there's tools out there like Splitly, which are really great in terms of optimizing your best images and your best pricing. But yeah, like, like I mentioned earlier, you know, your keywords need to be optimized, your titles, you know, making sure to have, let's say, lifestyle images, testing to have like the best main image so that you're getting the most people to click on your listing. All of that kind of stuff is great room for improvement and then making sure that your conversion rates are at least above 20%. So number six is neglecting product reviews. Everybody checks product reviews on Amazon. It's now like the social currency basically when you're shopping because it, it actually proves like social validation. And so what you really uh, want to do is make sure that you're doing everything you can to one, make sure that you get rid of all the negative reviews that you can and getting as many positive reviews that are going to stick, you know, like the verified reviews because that's like going to be the first thing that a lot of customers see is the number of reviews when they're shopping on Amazon. 
And then mistake number seven that I commonly see is people not optimizing and using uh, sponsored products for PPC. So this is like definitely one of like our best um, strategies for getting to the top of Amazon because if you're getting sales using a sponsored products, then you're basically showing Amazon like, hey, people are buying this product when using, or, you know, uh, when searching with these specific keywords. And so you're much more likely to get higher up in the organic search results if you're uh, definitely optimizing your PPC campaigns. And it's a great way to get even profitable sales. Okay, mistake number eight is not collecting sales tax at least in your home state so i am not a tax attorney no it's definitely not legal advice but there's great softwares out there like uh tax shark to help automate it and so you know there's definitely a lot of like kind of gray area around sales tax right now so i definitely i could recommend contacting like you know a legal advisor but i think at the very very least you should be collecting in your home state yeah i can say for our business we collect in like 20 something states and i think there is like some kind of advantage to that in terms of kind of getting like interest-free loans from the state but it's definitely one thing that you really want to pay attention to as a new seller okay mistake number nine is always competing on price so i think when uh, competition gets heavier i think almost everybody's natural reaction is just to drop the price drop the price drop the price and always competing on price or i'm gonna launch the exact same product but i'm just gonna sell it for 20 percent less than that and I think that's like not necessarily the best way of always competing because it's always going to be a race to the bottom. You're going to get shrinking margins I and mean, it's going to be harder and harder to make money. So I think really thinking about differentiating is a huge piece of like building your Amazon business. So like I mentioned, like kind of complementary products or bundling or, you know, creating like a more premium version. There's just so many other ways to go about it so that you're not always competing on price. Okay, mistake number 10 that I see common is running out of stock. And so this is huge on Amazon because if you run out of stock, your search rank is going to get hurt because basically where you show up on Amazon's search results is based on your overall sales in, in different like weighted average periods. And so if you are out of stock for like a bunch of days, then that is going to be hurting where you end up on the search results. So a lot of the time we'll send stuff by air if we know that we can do it profitably, even though our margin is gonna be less, but it's gonna avoid us from running out of stock. So really pay attention to your inventory planning. This We have an entire team dedicated. We actually have three inventory planners now for our 250 SKUs. They each manage about 80 SKUs, but it's incredibly important for us as a growing business to make sure that we stay in stock all the time. So mistake number 11 is failing to comply with Amazon's like packaging requirements. So they have really specific requirements around like carton sizes, weight, you know, like if you have poly bags, all that kind of stuff. That's super, super important. You can get hit with tons of fees if your products aren't labeled correctly or they're not packaged correctly. So definitely make sure, depending on what product you're selling, uh, that you're meeting all those requirements. Uh, mistake number 12 that I commonly see, commonly see people doing is going after really common complicated products. So maybe things with like magnets or batteries or electrical, all that kind of stuff is really challenging in the beginning. There's a lot of certifications and everything that's required as part of it. Uh, so I definitely would not recommend that as your first product. Go with something a little bit simpler that's going to be a lot easier. A mistake number 13 is going after a product with no market interest. And so I think it's, it's really cool to be unique and, you know, maybe be looking at other areas for where to get inspiration from. Like, I don't know, maybe you're going to Crate and Barrel or uh, to target for find, to find products to sell, um, but also be really uh, careful in terms of you need to make sure that there's actual interest on Amazon uh, for that product because maybe if you're going after like a really high end vase for whatever reason, like maybe that's not gonna it fits well at Crate and Barrel, but not necessarily on Amazon. Mistake number fourteen is not uh, that I see often is people getting married to the same product. So, you know, they, they find this product that they're like, oh man, this is gonna be the product that I'm gonna source. And then they go through and then they start reaching out to manufacturers and they realize that pricing doesn't work. And then, so they go and they reach out to more manufacturers and then like still it doesn't happen. And then they reach out to more manufacturers and they're constantly, they're so in love with this specific product, they don't realize, hey, maybe this isn't like the best product. And so, you know, one of the things that I tell like the new people on our team, is don't get married to a specific product. Try to be sourcing multiple products at the same time and then have, comparing them against each other to decide which is the best product. And then mistake number 15, the last one for you guys, is uh, not reinvesting at the profits. 
So yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome to take some money out of the business and kind of enjoy. But I think right now, this is like kind of like a golden era for Amazon. There's so much opportunity. And so as much as you can, reinvest the profits, you know, buy more inventory, launch new products, because there's just so much, so much like room for opportunity still left on Amazon uh, for you guys to grow your business. But yeah, that's uh, part two for the 15 mistakes that I see kind of newer sellers making on Amazon. I hope that's really helpful for you guys and hopefully these tips can help you guys get to the next level in your Amazon business. Good luck.